for the first time in 12 years, no American military forces are in Vietnam. All of our American POWs are on their way home. The 17 million people of South Vietnam have the right to choose their own government without outside interference. And because of our program of Vietnamization, they have the strength to defend that right. We have prevented the imposition of a communist government by force on South Vietnam. There are still some problem areas. The provisions of the agreement requiring an accounting for all missing in action in Indochina. The provisions with regard to Laos and Cambodia. The provisions prohibiting infiltration from North Vietnam into South Vietnam have not been complied with. We have and will continue to comply with the agreement. We shall insist that North Vietnam comply with the agreement. And the leaders of North Vietnam should have no doubt as to the consequences if they fail to comply with the agreement. But despite these difficulties, we can be proud tonight of the fact that we have achieved our goal of obtaining an agreement which provides peace with honor in Vietnam. And on this day, let us honor those who made this achievement possible, those who sacrificed their lives, those who were disabled, those who made every one of us proud to be an American as they returned from years of communist imprisonment, and every one of the two and a half million Americans who served honorably in our nation's longest war. Never have men served with greater devotion abroad with less apparent support at home. Let us provide these men with the veterans benefits and the job opportunities they have earned. And let us honor them with the respect they deserve. And I say again tonight, let us not dishonor those who serve their country by granting amnesty to those who deserted America. Tonight, I want to express the appreciation of the nation to others who helped make this day possible. I refer to you, the great majority of Americans listening to me tonight, who despite an unprecedented barrage of criticism from a small but vocal minority, stood firm for peace with honor. I know it was not easy for you to do so. We've been through some difficult times together. I recall the time in November 1969 when hundreds of thousands of demonstrators marched on the White House. The time in April 1970 when I found it necessary to order attacks on communist bases in Cambodia. The time in May 1972 when I ordered the mining of Haiphong and airstrikes on military targets in North Vietnam in order to stop a massive communist offensive in South Vietnam. And then, and this was perhaps the hardest decision I have made as president, on December 18, 1972, when our hopes for peace were so high and when the North Vietnamese stonewalled us at the conference table, I found it necessary to order more airstrikes on military targets in North Vietnam in order to break the deadlock. On each of these occasions, the voices of opposition we heard in Washington were so loud, they at times seemed to be the majority. But across America, the overwhelming majority stood firm against those who advocated peace at any price, even if the price would have been defeat and humiliation for the United States. And because you stood firm, stood firm for doing what was right, Colonel McKnight was able to say for his fellow POWs when he returned home a few days ago, thank you for bringing us home on our feet instead of on our knees. Let me turn finally tonight to another great challenge we face. As we end America's longest war, let us resolve that we shall not lose the peace. During the past year, we've made great progress toward our goal of a generation of peace for America and the world. The war in Vietnam has been ended. After 20 years of hostility and confrontation, we have opened a constructive new relationship with the People's Republic of China, where one-fourth of all the people in the world live. We negotiated last year with the Soviet Union a number of important agreements, including an agreement which takes a major step in limiting nuclear arms. 
Now there are some who say that in view of all this progress toward peace, why not cut our defense budget? Well, let's look at the facts. Our defense budget today takes the lowest percentage of our gross national product that it has in 20 years. There's nothing I would like better than to be able to reduce it further. But we must never forget that we would not have made the progress toward lasting peace that we have made in this past year unless we had had the military strength that commanded respect. This year, we have begun new negotiations with the Soviet Union for further limitations on nuclear arms. And we shall be participating later in the year in negotiations for mutual reduction of forces in Europe. If prior to these negotiations, we in the United States unilaterally reduce our defense budget or reduce our forces in Europe, any chance for successful negotiations for mutual reduction of forces or limitation of arms will be destroyed. There is one unbreakable rule of international diplomacy. You can't get something in a negotiation unless you have something to give. If we cut our defenses before negotiations begin, any incentive for other nations to cut theirs will go right out the window. If the United States reduces its defenses and others do not, it will increase the danger of war. It is only a mutual reduction of forces which will reduce the danger of war. And that is why we must maintain our strength until we get agreements under which other nations will join us in reducing the burden of armaments. What is at stake is whether the United States shall become the second strongest nation in the world. If that day ever comes, the chance for building a new structure of peace in the world would be irreparably damaged, and free nations everywhere would be living in mortal danger. A strong United States is not a threat to peace. It is the free world's indispensable guardian of peace and freedom. I ask for your support tonight for keeping the strength the strength which enabled us to make such great progress toward world peace in the past year, and which is indispensable as we continue our bold new initiatives for peace in the years ahead.